Got it. Hi, everyone. I'm Rick Zanotti. And this is eLearn Chat, where you always learn something new. I'm joined today by Harold Muliati. He's co hosting and running the video switcher and mixer. And today we've got Matthew Pierce from TechSmith. I call him the voice of TechSmith. He's done so many tutorials. And I, when I first heard, I got to know that voice. He's on again. He's going to be talking about the brand new version of Snagit. Here we go. This show is sponsored by Relate Corporation at www.relate.com. Your training and video partner. And here we are with, with Matt Pierce from TechSmith. Hey, Matt, how are you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me back. This oh, is our, great. I'm our pleasure. I missed you at the show. We, we were both at DevLearn last week, and I got to meet the lovely Nikki. She was at the booth. She was the only one at the booth. It was right before it opened. And we were talking a bit, and you were doing, I think, a, a, a session about an hour after. You were probably prepping for the session. And uh, so we got to miss you because, unfortunately, we weren't able to circle back. But um, it, she said it was real busy. So you guys were, were, yep. were pretty swamped, which is good. It is. Um, anytime you go to an event, an event that you're investing in, you want to make sure you're getting good traffic. Mm -hmm. And for us, you know, a lot of it is uh, we're pretty well known in the e-learning space, obviously, with tools like Snagit and Camtasia. So it's a great time for us to connect with our customers, to hear how things are going for them, the concerns that they have, things that, you know, introduce them to new things that they might mm -hmm. not be aware of. Even, even if they've been using the product for multiple years, there's always something that we can show them that's like, hey, did you know about this? And oftentimes we get what that's in my version right now and they're so excited yeah. so it's always a, a great time to be at the events and personally i you know i speak at a lot of events like this and i love catching up with people seeing people hearing how things are going for them and their jobs their roles you know then also just being an assistant and a help to them with whatever they might be working on well you know i told nikki when we were there i think she was surprised i said you know Snagit, Camtasia, Snagit in particular, I said, that is the gotta have tool. You, If you have no other tools in this world, you need Snagit. And she goes, really? I go, no, really? We really mean that. It's, just, it's one of the best tools. And, and it's a very inexpensive tool for what you get. It's just a great utility tool. And it just makes life easy. Uh, you know, when we do instructional design, nothing works as well as Snagit to capture images and put them in your Word doc exactly where you want every time. It just it just eliminates having to search for stuff. It's instant. It's, it's and kind of the Swiss Army knife of e-learning. It, it is. It is. <laughs> and and it's not just free well, learning. Well, it works with so many tools, right? Like you yeah. can, if you're using uh, Articulate's products, you're using Adobe products, mm -hmm. you're using uh, an LMS, you can use it. it it's yeah. fundamentally solves working on a lot through a lot of those products. And it's just so no, easy. And that's if, true. if you're working with software at all, uh, you can do obviously grab or capture or whatever mm -hmm. that you have, not but the same. then Snagit just adds so much more to it. Yep, and and by the way, we're not getting paid to say this. Just so you know, just to clarify, <laughs> well, we actually believe in the product. <laughs> I've loved Snagit for years, uh, and it's been just one of those gotta have. Whether it's on a Mac, a PC, whatever, you gotta have it. It's just one of those tools. And I know a lot of people who are instructional designers, writers, marketing people. They all say the same thing. They, they <laughs> what's your favorite well, tool? Snagit. You know, you hear that a lot, and and it's always fun. Now, you also did a pre-conference, one-day event, too? We did. Uh, so first of all, thank you for the kind words about the products. But we did, at DevLearn, we did our very first what we called LearnCon. It was a pre-session on Monday before DevLearn. Um, it was part of the DevLearn conference mm -hmm. kind of setup, and uh, that was really great. We had about 50 people that we talked to. Nice. We got to walk them through some things in Camtasia. We had two tracks, so walking through things and like kind of we t broke it down by visual and video. Mm -hmm. um, Try to share some key information about not only just how to use product, but also thinking about how to make things better. We had guests, uh, Josh Cavalier, who oh, I know Josh. Lodestone. Yep. Josh just launched uh, joshcavalier.com uh, while he was there. And it's, uh, you know, so he was there talking about working with video. We had uh, Bianca Woods, who works at the mm -hmm. Guild, was there. Uh, Danielle Wallace, who t talks a lot about marketing video, was there. Uh, brought in a professor from Michigan State University to talk about visual design. And he used to work at Newsweek and other publications mm -hmm. in New York creating infographics. So that was like super interesting to hear about kind of the thinking of how do you make good visuals? How do you take data to make mm -hmm. good visuals? So 
Wow. A lot happened in just one day. That sounds like a fun event. Yeah, it was, it was, it was great. Great, great turnout of people. Lots of great questions. Um, so something hopefully we'll look at seeing if there's more opportunities to do something like that again in the future. Yeah. And we just downloaded the new, the new improved and oh, with always new features. I always go, yeah, they pushed it one more time. The new, can um, um, the new snag the snag the new snag 2020, 2020. Yeah. Yeah. um i was stuck on camtasia in my brain but it was the new snag <laughs> 2020 and it's pretty cool it, it, tell us a little bit about what you guys have done with that it's it's a it's a i'd say it's a pretty big release it is uh you know this is there's often times when you have releases you're like okay that's really cool we got some new stuff out there we improved functionality added one or two things but this is one and i, I especially picked up on this when i was showing it off to people at devlearn when I would show them some of the new features, their jaw would literally drop like, hmm. oh my gosh. Um, and so a couple things, we realized that fundamentally a lot of people see Snagit as just a screen capture tool, right? You click mm -hmm. and drag, you get your screen capture, you take it, put it someplace else. And that's perfectly fine if that's the way you're using Snagit. But we also realize that there's opportunities for people to, that they need to create a little bit more than that. And so one of the new things I want to talk about is two different types of creations that we can make out of Snagit. So if you don't mind, I'll, I'll share my screen sure. just to show this off because I think it's better seen <clears throat> than just uh, me talking about it. You know, it's funny you said that because a lot of people don't know you can record video with Snagit. You can, absolutely. <laughs> so We've recorded many uh, conference calls first. with it. Yep. <laughs> no, we're not we're not making conference calls yet, but you know, you can yeah. definitely uh, do some things here in Snagit. So let me this is just a Snagit editor. I've already taken some screen captures. So one of the things that's new is we've added a little button uh, that if you click on it, you get two options, image from template and video from images. And the first one I want to do is I want to do image from template. And now what you get are all these templates and there's more that you can actually go and download uh, because we we really some of them are free, but some of them are part of a new service that's called TechSmith Assets for for Snagit, which is an add-on purchase. It's uh, I think it's fifty dollars for a year, and you get access to tons and tons of different assets, including templates, stamps, and more. We can talk about that in a minute, but right now we get these templates, and I I actually went through and downloaded a few. But let's say we want to do something like this one with the red because it's, it's looking good to me, and maybe it fits my process or my flow, and I can say create. And now I've got this screen here. You can see you've got these placeholders. And because this is Snagit, everything is customizable and editable here in the timeline. So I can give this a title like uh, make a screen capture, something like that. I could change the, the subtitle here. But now for the as for the images, all I need to do is I can click and drag for my tray and put it in there. Now this one didn't quite fit the way I'd, I'd hoped. So what I can do is I can double click it here and I can move it around to get it customized or I can, maybe I'm gonna shrink it down a little bit so I can resize it so it fits in my template exactly the way I want. And I can do this with any images. So let's say I take, uh, let me see here for my tray or for my library. Oh, we'll just take something. Uh, this is from a game I play. Same thing, right? I can I can go through and customize all this stuff. Or if I maybe wanted to focus on something a little bit more, I can make it a little bit bigger. Um, so it gives you a lot of flexibility to create something really quickly. And one of the reasons I love this is because imagine you're creating a video, which is something I do a lot of from a learning perspective. All of a sudden, what I can do is take that video and I can, uh, you know, easily create a job aid. Right, like I can go through and grab frames, whether from Snagit or from Camtasia, and I can make a step-by-step -step guide to emphasize what I've been teaching in that video. So super easy. If I, you know, I've got lots of templates I can play with. In fact, uh, I'll switch back to screen here. But I, I was looking through the asset store for all the templates that we have, and it, I think there must have been 150. Mm -hmm. Now some of them are repeats, different colors, different little design elements. Um, but that's super cool because then you can make it look like your company, your need. Um, and we actually did work with a, a gal and I can't, her name is escaping me and I apologize to her because I can't remember. But she went through, she's a visual designer, she's an information designer. She helped us create the flows for those. So we think we've got a really good 
set to start with. And our goal and intention is to create more of those. So you can imagine, you know, you can go through and you're gonna have lots of different options for creating quick and easy handout job aids, hmm. you know, to, just to fill that quick and easy need that you might have. Yeah, they look really helpful. I mean, I, I can see that, you know, if you get used to these templates, then it, it, whenever you come across a situation where you're like, you know, I need a screen cap, but I also need to focus on two, uh, you know, two spots on it. I need to focus on three spots on it. Then you can do it and you can just put it in there. That's that's pretty neat. It, absolutely. It's, it's a lot about workflow, right? Like you think about a screen capture. Usually we're not taking a screen capture in isolation. Um, you're taking it in process of like a steps, right? And you want to show somebody how to do something. In fact, uh, my son is living in Mexico uh, and he was sending out group email once a week to people and he's like, I don't have time to add everybody to the email. And I'm like, create an email group, right? Like that's something that as someone who works in email, that's pretty natural, but he didn't know he's 18. Uh, and so I just made a series of quick screenshots and put them into a template so I could easily walk him through knowing that he wasn't going to have access to be able to watch a video, could walk him through the steps pretty quickly and easily. So, And, and by the nice. way, you, you heard it here. I didn't think you were m much more than in your 20s. So I go, wow, you have an 18-year-old. <laughs> you look really young. <laughs> well, thank good. you. Uh, most people are surprised <laughs> that my <laughs> that my that I have somebody that's old enough in my household. I also have uh, three other kids. So, you know, I, I got the gamut. They, they keep me yeah. young. It's But the hair, I guess, is the giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to share my screen again. Let's go back to Snagit because let me show you this other process because I think this is really cool as well. So I often am giving quick updates on things and I'm gonna show you a similar process. Uh, you could do it through the plus, but I'm gonna do it a little bit different this time. Let's say I wanted to talk through some something where there's a quick update and I've already got screenshots. Um, and so maybe I'll take this one here and I'll use, and I'm on a Mac, similar process on a, a Windows machine. I'm just gonna select three things. I'm gonna right click on them and I'm gonna say uh, create video from images. What this brings up is a Snagit video recorder, and I got a couple options here. I can ch choose to record the mouse cursor, so it would be in the recording. I can choose turn on my audio, so the audio is gonna be captured. Now, because we're on Skype, I'm a little bit worried about the uh, interference that that might cause, so I'm mm. gonna turn those, I'll turn off the microphone at least. But just know that you could capture your audio. And now you'll see I've got these buttons, and this is a previous capture, so now I can actually start going through these kind of like you would a PowerPoint slide. I, I hit record, it's gonna start recording. Give me my countdown. And then I can just talk through this process as I normally would. So maybe I'm talking about adding a template. Maybe I say then I, hey, you wanna find an image that you wanna uh, add. If you have something saved in quick styles, quick styles are usually like arrows, things like that. I can actually draw arrows, boxes, shapes in my recording as we go and those are things that are being captured so if i did it again here say maybe i want to focus uh let's make sure that's selected i do this and, and again i'm just chatting through it and when i'm done i hit stop and now i have an mp4 video that's ready to share and if we look wow. at this we'll see how this is gonna i don't know how this will play back but we'll give it a go you can see this my mouse cursor is moving around there and then we'll switch slides here in just a second. There's this new slide talking through all the stuff I talked about. And then you can see here I drag and draw that box. So pretty cool and pretty easy. Like we know that sometimes you're going to want to make something that's uh, more polished. You're going to need more screen capture capability. And that's what Camtasia is for. But when you need something quick and easy, especially if you've already done the screen captures, to me, this is like this is super powerful in terms of process and flow because I don't have to stop to think about like, oh, do I have the information? What what do I need to go? I can just do it, especially um, like I was doing a share out on our TechSmith Academy, you know, analytics, how's it performing? What kind of things is leadership interested in? And I already took the screenshots for a presentation and I was like, let me just let me just talk through these. So super fast and easy to for internal communication and or let's say a customer calls and they're like, hey, how did I do this again? Or, you know, get the email step by step. Boom. You've got something without really a lot of thought. It's and, kind of like a mini Camtasia light right within Snagit. And Absolutely. You know, looking at that, something that 
a, a specific case I think that could be really helpful for would be giving people directions because you know you could pull up a map you could you could show the mouse going through it while you're explaining also and you know if someone needs to leave in 15 minutes and then get to you then you could it would be in time to just send it to them and they'll be like oh there's that's how i get there yeah i think any kind of process like that right a map is a great example because oftentimes <laughs> directions you know someone might be directionally challenged or they're not exactly sure based on the map where like do i turn here mm -hmm. uh you know gps is a wonderful thing and i think it gets me more places than not however you can imagine, uh, you know, we get customers who will email us and say, like, this is a common experience we just had recently. Uh, we launched with Snagit uh, 2020 a, a Snagit certification program. Yeah. Which is, uh, I can talk about in just a second, but what we found is that we send the cert certificate when you're done in an email and there's some kind of something funky going on where not everyone's getting their email. Mm -hmm. Well, they still want their certificate. So we can easily walk through the steps of just quick screenshots to say like, here's how you can still get your certificate even if you didn't get the email yet. Um, like didn't need a full on screen capture video. I uh, just wanted to point some things out. Probably already have it documented. Just any kind of step process like that is super quick. And even with the template, which you saw I could record in there, maybe you're just walking through the template. Maybe it's an explainer, like here's how you use this, or mm -hmm. here's the steps. Uh, you know, a little context around it, because I think that context in that video, you know, it can speed up what you're talking about, what you're doing. And one thing that a lot of people don't realize also is that you can capture the internal audio of your Mac, your PC. And that it gets included also in the file, which is really cool because the software that comes on PCs and Macs does not capture internal audio. Just saying. Yeah. So if you're doing so, I mean, we can we can look at that. Let me switch back to the screen here and go through a couple other things that aren't necessarily new, but I think it's it's well worth um, sharing. So uh, let me bring up Snagit here. This is the capture UI. Uh, so you can see here that you've got a capture. I can put it on image video. I like the all-in-one uh, capture, which just allows mm -hmm. me to do a click and drag. And then I can do choose uh, image or video, which we'll see. It, it might just black out the Skype. Uh, I don't know if you guys can still see me or hear me mm -hmm. when I do that. We can. Um, so when you do that screen recording, so let me go back to it here. When I do that, I put on recording. I can choose that system audio. So it would record, like if I recorded what we're doing right now, it would record both my microphone and the other side. Anything right. So whatever we're saying should show up on the recording right now. Yeah, absolutely. And so it's a light, lightweight recorder. It's easy to use. Um, but other things that you can do that I really like is I was playing with these presets earlier. So someone asked me, what's the fastest way to get a screen capture from their computer with Snagit to their iPhone? Like, oh, wow, that's, I don't know. And so I set it up so like in this particular preset, you'd go a region capture to AirDrop on a Mac. And then if they've got AirDrop enabled, you could do, you could send it that way. So, but generally speaking, I just keep it on kind of normal settings. I don't, I don't usually use a lot of these different things, but you can, you can customize your Snagit to do kind of whatever you want it to do. Um, the way you want it, whether you want to go like capture just an image or you want to uh, have it scroll, you can set those presets up so you can get all the information in what, that you want. And once you do capture, and the capture hasn't really changed dramatically, um, let me find something here real quick. Uh, you know, let me take, let me just take a quick image capture here, something of like this website. And this is actually the TechSmith assets for Snagit website. And let's say we got something like this. Let me just grab a little bit more, and we do a quick capture of that. There's another feature that I really love in Snagit. And oh, I, you know what? I got my settings. <laughs> I should have prepped a little bit better. I forgot to look at my all my settings. I want this to go preview an editor. So it's a common common thing. But here it is in my editor. Got it here. Um, one of the things that's fairly new with the last version of Snagit is something we called Simplify. Now, if you've been on like Facebook or you've been to YouTube and it's loading slowly, you, you'll see that's kind of like an outline form of your of the product that they're you know why it loads. Uh, Simplify. The idea behind it is a simplified user interface or simplified graphics. So, 
it's great to show people all the complexity, but sometimes you need them to focus. Sometimes you want to just have them see that, yeah, there's other stuff there, but not pay attention to it. So I'm going to click on simplify. Now it is pulling from the colors kind of the best it can uh, from the screen, but I'm going to choose this option down here called auto simplify. And this is a little hit or miss still, but what you can see is it took all these things and basically block them out. Now some things it missed, it didn't know what to do with it, but you can see like my logo became a block here. It started well, covering up some of the text. We're not actually seeing the uh, block out from the simplify. Oh, okay, so maybe it got frozen here. Let me... It's it's still going, but you might have to stop it and then show us the recording. Yeah, we're gonna, sorry about that. Let me stop it real quick, because what I think is seeing, it's showing what's behind my Snagit mm -hmm. screen. Tech demos when you're working with screen capture software is always a little yes. tough. <laughs> That's a really cool feature, though. But yeah, uh, unfortunately, it helps us see it. it. Let's see. Okay, so you're still you're still, for whatever reason Snagit's not playing nice. Um, let me. I'm just gonna let me stop <clears throat> Snagit. It's I think what Skype is fighting for the resource. Skype's with probably Snagit. trying to control the screen sharing. Yep. So let me let me stop the screen sharing here. Why, well, why I relaunch it uh, real quick? Uh, what you can see here is this assets. So I'm logged in, so I have full access. But like, if you want stamps or these types of other objects that you would want to put inside of your um, your Snagit instance, you could definitely do that. So for instance, you know, here are some of those just those templates. So if I go to browse all templates, you'll start to see like. There are a lot of different options there. Okay, now Skype's back, or Snag it's back. So, but as I was saying, there's all these different options, right? Like tons and tons of different designs, uh, maybe some different, more fun ones, some more kind of practical ones, timelines, things inter involving your like a computer display, so you can kind of fill those out. So, lots of different assets. Also, there's a photo library, so if you need things that you want to put in, you know, maybe you're making stuff for presentations. You want to use something in the background, lots and lots of different things in there. I can't remember. It's like some odd million or two million hmm. uh, different images. So wow. lots and lots. Okay, here we go. So now you can see it took and applied that screenshot. And I can it, – it's just creating kind of looking – trying smartly to look at where there's text or there's blocks. And if you don't like any of these here, so let's say you're trying to focus on – telling people how to search. You can you can just get rid of these pretty easy. So I can say like, this is where I want to focus and maybe this didn't cover enough. So all of a sudden, oh, but we didn't cover up the premium royalties free. So now you can start to create this very simple Im image where you get to dictate what's being focused on, which I really like. Um, I, here's, a, here's just a mock-up. This is the TechSmith Academy. Um, Similar thing. I had to do a little bit of work just because it didn't always catch everything, but I think that would give someone like pretty good idea of what what we're showing. And I might, you know, maybe take the thumbnails if I don't want them. I could say, like, well, I don't really love the thumbnails, but let's do something like, you know, a rounded box like that. So now you know there's a thumbnail, but you get the idea of the layout and what it is. So great for just kind of again simplifying your images, taking away some of the complexity. You know, if you wanted, like, oh, that's too many lines again, we could, you know, make just make it big and, sh you know, block more of the image out if we wanted to. So that's that's one of the ones I really like. I think it could be super helpful and useful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, if, if the auto simplified, if it already gets you, you know, 70% of the way there, even if it doesn't get everything, that's going to save a lot of time, which in this case might only be seconds, but maybe that's what you need. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And that's I think that's really the idea, right? Well, and we can yeah. just do this on this one. All of a sudden, maybe I want to just focus on these share destinations. And again, it's just easy to clean up, easy to draw attention. Then especially when you add the annotations that are, you know, Snagit's had for many, many years, whether that's highlights, boxes, circles, mm -hmm. or arrows, all of a sudden <clears throat> you're not fighting the complexity of maybe a complex screenshot, which I think is really important from a cognitive load standpoint, mm -hmm. just kind of the psychology of understanding. Like, you know what this is. You can understand that this is probably this dialogue box.
but all of a sudden I've made it so it's much clearer where do I focus and I'm not getting distracted by what these other things are. Um, in this case, I'd probably block out these other icons, but again, just kind of a, a another way to enhance what you're already creating. Well, and um, simplifying interfaces, yeah, that, that's one, one use for this, but another that I can definitely see this being helpful for is de-identifying de or blocking out, you know, proprietary info from uh, w when you're putting screen caps in, in training, you know, there might be like customer info or something like that that you need to block out and this would make it very simple. Do it right in. Yeah, it. absolutely. Absolutely. That is fantastic use. For instance, we, we've always had, for a long time, we've had blur, right? And I could blur mm -hmm, yeah. out different things, but it's a manual process and it's, it's okay, but it just makes me wonder like, well, what's there? What am I missing? And the Simplify gives you the sense that there's data there or information there, but it's just not important. And so Blur is still a super fantastic feature mm -hmm. and I still like it, but Simplify saves a lot of time, especially in those personally identifying information situations, you know, with all the rules around GDPR and uh, that, it just, it becomes a lot, a lot simpler. Now, I want to show you a couple more because there's a couple things that are really, really cool that I just, I just love. And again, I'm showing the Mac version, but it's, it's the same on the Windows version. So I'm going to just choose my selector tool here. And let's say for whatever reason, I need some text. I need a copy of this text because I need to send it to a product team to update or something like that. And I could just send them a screenshot and they could, or I could type it out. But better yet, I'm going to select, kind of highlight that with that marching ant box there and I'm going to grab text. Now Snag is gonna work in the background and do OCR on this, and now it got share out name, screencast.com, shortcut, add hmm. shortcut. Oh. It was able to grab yeah, that's pretty cool. all that text. <laughs> that's cool. And now I can copy and paste it into my document. So maybe, in this case, maybe I don't want this, maybe I want this list of outputs, because maybe I'm creating documentation about what what it can do. Again, I just go grab text and boom. Wow. I've, I've got that easy, easy cleanup. Now I can put it into my documentation. I'm ready to go. So I really like that. I think it's just, it's super handy. If maybe a, a developer or maybe someone sent you a flattened screenshot and you just need that text, maybe it's an error message. Who knows what it is, well, but it's really easy to grab. D does it only do like Latin alphabet? Does it also do uh, other things like Chinese and stuff like that? That's a really good question that I'd have to look. I'm I'm not sure off the top of my head. My guess is it's probably Latin alphabet, um, but it's definitely something we can try. Uh, yeah, but I'm not 100 percent sure. I, I would hate to say yes and then have someone yeah. be really disappointed. So that, that's a we'll we'll check on that. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I can see that this would be really useful. So the the other thing here, since we've got to select it, is let's say uh, there's a typo in one of my screenshots. And I'm going to say this will be a, a, a limited use kind of instance, um, but there are times when it might make sense. Maybe you're doing a mock-up or you're like, oh no, I just need to change that because I want to show somebody what it could look like. Mm -hmm. Instead of grab text this time, I'm going to go to edit text. And mm -hmm. again, it's going to try to do OCR and basically it's going to create an editable object. Now the challenge here is, especially with weird fonts or fonts that are unusual, like if this was Arial that we were using inside the product, this would work really great. Can't, uh, Snag is trying to match the font type. In this case, uh, it didn't do as probably as good as I wanted, so I might have to play with the font to choose one that's going to work well, uh, choose the color because I don't think it quite nailed the color here. Um, so I might have to play with this, but now I could say – I can just go in and change it, right? And mm -hmm. what's now, Matt? Can you do wanna... something like you just say if you have WebKit fonts, they'll work, but if they're not WebKit, they won't. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it's completely that simple of an answer. Um, I'd have to talk to the developers to, to exactly figure out what yeah. we're looking for. Um, but we can we like we use uh, like Museo Sans and Proxima Nova for a lot of our fonts, hmm. um, inside products. And I, I think like, let's see if, I don't know if I have those installed right now. Uh, and I'm not a hundred percent sure if that's the right font here. I, I think it's just, it will do its best. And it usually goes to like a, 
kind of sans the default sans serif a lot okay. of times. But we could try yeah. some different things. <laughs> um, so you can see in this case, it doesn't match 100%. It's something to be played with, and probably if you knew the font, you could you could get a little bit closer to mm -hmm. making a, a better decision for it. Or sometimes it does match. Yeah, that's still cool. Yeah, but I mean, in a lot of cases, for demonstration purposes, that'll that'll get getting it that far will probably be enough, right? Absolutely. Or or if you just like you know what we need something now, and this is better than than nothing. Yeah. It's it really can start to help you. So, mm -hmm. uh, so for instance, in this one again, uh, let's just try it. Like let's see here, and we'll go again. We'll just uh, edit text. Uh, did it work? Nope. Oh, draw the wrong thing here. Let's try. It. Let me try that again. We'll try this. Now this is a lot of text. It might take a second to process. So now you can see it's actually breaking oh. into some different different things here. So now I can go in here, and this looks like it's it looks a lot closer than the other example, mm -hmm. at least in terms of format. So then you know again if I had a typo or something, and it's kind of do or die situation, like I've got to get my documentation out, or there's no good way for me to update this screenshot, we could you could go in there and, and definitely make some changes. That's, so that's, that's actually pretty that's cool. Another one. Yep. And one more, because uh, let me go back here. I'm going to undo my uh, all my simplify stuff here, if I can. Get back to that original state. Uh, maybe it's too many undos, but that's okay. L let's say here we've got an interface, and uh, you know one of the things I sometimes do is I'm trying to save kind of just generally. Um, some real estate space when I'm putting in an email or screenshot stuff. Uh, let's say I need to cut out this part right over here. There's We've had this feature for a long time that's called cut out. I can select like maybe I want to show that I've taken some stuff out here. It's you know just wasted space because this is a wide image. Uh, i got to flatten some things. No big deal. Uh, now it shows that. It's got a transparent background. But let's say I don't – I, I need to include this terms of use and maybe my logo here, but really, I don't. It's just still not really using the space well. So I'm going to again choose my selector tool here. Going to highlight this. You can see there's transparent and autofill. If I just keep it on autofill, I can just drag that right over. Or let's say this icon down here, I can just take it and move it around. Now, it oh. works best with a solid background. But I can start to mock up and move and change images to kind of manipulate them to look as needed to fit my space. Mm -hmm. Now, if I do it up here, like let's say I want to move this premium, you get a little bit of a blur kind of effect that doesn't look look as good. Uh, but it's trying its best to understand what's back there and, and mimic that. The other thing that you can do this with is if we go to what's called the magic wand, and I can... I can then start selecting things, kind of like almost like in Photoshop, right? I can start yeah. selecting pieces and colors. The magic wand is going to try to understand those so I can move them around. Or where's the other one here? Simplify magic wand. Maybe it's – oh, right here. So this kind of the arrow and the crosshair, I can turn on smart move. And it's going to look for an individual object. So now you can see the little flash there. Now it's tried to identify different pieces, right? Like it says, oh, I know, that's that's a piece. Oh. And it selected that. Or I can come up here and I don't have to select anything. It just is starting to understand what all these elements are and that I can start, it's like for whatever reason, I thought those three were together. But I can start moving things around and rearranging my, my screenshots pretty easily. Now... I wouldn't try this with a photo, an actual photo. You can see it's probably got some, it's get some weird kind of funkiness in there. But ultimately, we're getting, it's getting a lot more powerful in terms of um, what you can actually do with your screen capture product, like with your screen captures, right? You can use them beyond just, mm -hmm. um, you know, just taking a screen capture. You can actually start to make new ideas, new content with them. Um, and of course you want to be careful, like you don't want to mislead anyone, but it allows you to like, again, in that example, last example, I'm not misleading anybody by just moving over the terms of use. I'm just trying yeah. to show it in such a way that's going to save screen real estate. So 
I think so, hopefully super helpful. Oh, yeah. It's very cool. Nice, nice new features. <clears throat> Every time and there's we think, always other stuff that is yeah. going in all the time that's been there for a while that I think most people, I think, use 5 to 10% of what Snagit can do. Right. And then there's all the stuff that's been adding for, you know, Snagit was first released in 1990. So we've got over 30 years worth of product. Blessing and a curse, you know, when you think <laughs> about software. But there's a lot of things that it can do that people just have – they had no idea that they can actually get done with it. Yeah, it's amazing. It, I, every time you come out with a new version, I go, they did something. To, wow, they added more. It's, you just sometimes think that's it. There's not going to be anything else. They've reached the limit. And no, it's magic, like you said. Pretty cool. Are, are they using kind of an yeah. AI front end on some of the stuff to figure out the, the shapes and everything else? You know, I'm not a developer, so it is it is uh, indistinguishable possible. from magic from for me. It's like, oh, that is magic. It is um, magic. <clears throat> I bet you they're doing. They probably they probably have some sort of AI to to match to match patterns and stuff because it's pretty amazing how quick it happens and from what you showed, pretty accurate. Yeah, I know the on um, all the word kind of like the grabbing the text mm -hmm. and the replay editing the text that's all using optical character recognition mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's built into the background but what i do know i i don't know if it's ai i do know that i work with a really a lot of very smart people mm -hmm. who are very good at what they do and i feel fortunate to be able to, to go out and share their hard work because um <clears throat> oftentimes it does astound me what they come up with and the things that their our developers and product teams are doing is is it's like, oh my gosh. And like, and sometimes you like we get desensitized to it, right? Because we're internal. Like I, I saw yeah. Snagit 20 spent for several months now. And I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, whatever, templates. But it, when I was out with at DevLearn and I saw people's faces when they you could see the light bulb. Yep. That's when I was like, oh my gosh, yes, this is super exciting. I, I then started to think through of all the really the use cases that there are for, and I'm sure we haven't even scratched the surface and there's so many ideas i think you know as if you all anyone watching this or listening to this has ideas like oh i wish there was a template that could do x or was set up like this let us know because we really do want to expand and continue to grow <clears throat> the, the capability that snagit has again not just to be a screen capture tool but to be that assist wherever you're creating your learning development your documentation so that it's like, oh, you're making good stuff anyway. Let's let's help you make it even better mm -hmm. in that in that process. Well, one thing we've got to give you guys kudos for: you have a great QA team. You, you've got great developers, but boy, without a great QA team, it's amazing what could go wrong. Because of all the tools we've ever seen throughout the years, and we've seen a lot of tools, I would say Snagit, Camtasia, uh, really don't have many bugs, if at all. And that in <laughs> itself is a, is, a, is a money saver for everyone. Well, th and that's a huge part of the reason why uh, just about everyone, regardless of position in this industry, ends yeah. up going to snag it at some mm -hmm. point for another or another because they know it's going to be reliable. Yeah, and that's true. No matter how many versions you've had in all these years, I think I've had, had my first copy probably in the, in the mid-90s somewhere. It, you know, it's always been just solid, rock solid, and nothing's changed throughout the years. It's still very solid. I'm sure there's bugs, but not peop not things that people run in, run into all the time. And that, well, you go to any authoring tool and good luck, there's a million bugs. <laughs> but you guys are just yeah. clean, clean. In Camtasia, well, same well, thing, you. clean. So, you know, as developers, we, we appreciate that. You know, yeah. They, they work really hard to balance it out, right? There's – with any release, whether it's you're creating an instruction or whether it's software, mm -hmm. you're trying to balance feature, function, kind of speed, yep. agility, and, and still, you know, get out a good product that people are going to want to buy. And our, you know, like I said, our whole development teams, and that includes our QA, everyone involved from product leadership – to the you know the newest developer uh, our instructional design team they're they're all really working hard to make sure we're making something that's going to work and that's going to do things that are useful and um yeah. you know and sometimes it's <clears throat> it's hard to do that well uh and again just feel very fortunate to be working with teams that they get it and they you know they want to understand the needs and they want to make something that everyone in the industry feels good about using yep um and so far you know knock on wood it's, it's you know it's, it's been working. really good yeah you guys are always, awesome software always has problems but yeah but now you guys are awesome you do a great job and and that music says our time is about up 
this is good. Well, Matt, you want to come back to the screen? Oh, I should be. Oh, um, there you are. Not? Okay. Yeah, yeah, sorry. He's, he's sorry. Yeah. Um, that was great. We really appreciate you coming on and sharing the new features and, of course, the, the evolution of Snagit one more time. And uh, this is fun. I'm already, my mind's reeling on a couple of things that we could do with it. We just downloaded it, I think it was yesterday. So yeah. um, we haven't had a chance to really play with it. But we will. We will. That, there's some really good ideas. I didn't know you had that little OCR thing that could take tech. You'd be surprised yeah. how many times we have to retype in text. And we're going, man, it's that's really, going to save yeah, some time. I, so yeah. those are cool things. Simple, you know, like the. Well, thank you. It might be a simple feature, but it's not that simple. There's a lot of work in that. So oh, nice, yeah. <laughs> nice. So below we'll have information on TechSmith, and uh, if anybody wants to get a hold of you, we'll have your your name there. Uh, but yeah, you guys keep doing great work, and and Matt, just appreciate you coming on and sharing with us. This this is good. Well, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate the opportunity to to share a little bit about the products and also hopefully uh, help the rest of the industry to get that leg up and making great content. Yeah, our pleasure. And and we look forward to it. You know, your success is our success. That's the way we see it. Every time you do something good, it makes our life better. So a good thing. Well, thank you. Well, anyway, well, thanks for coming on. If you're watching the show, please subscribe. Take a look at Snagit. If you haven't purchased uh, Snagit or any of the other TechSmith products, do it. Don't don't waste your time. Do it. Like I said, we're not getting anything out of this. Just do it. They're a great company, and they really do make software that makes you more productive. And that's that's good in today's day and age. So have a good one, everyone. We will see you on the next show. Take care. Bye. Thanks, Matt. Bye, everyone. Thank you.